The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Yeah, Earnestly Speaking Podcast. Let's get it. I'm a giant in New York, in Miami, carry heat. So much more in store, my product can flood the street. Opinion Nation, Godfather, CEO. Pop in the late 90s, gonna see me blow. Oh. Got my hustle on, no imitation of bad. Army of untouchables, Opinion Nation staff. Never an off season, homie, check the numbers. Heart drop in my own right, supply and southern comfort. Earnestly speaking, my ego is well fed. Earnestly speaking, you're too feeble. And no threat. See him like a hurricane. You're a wild breeze. Earnestly speaking, leaving Eli a dynasty. Shake. First week podcast coming to you June 16th, 2024. Happy Father's Day to all my fellow dads out there, especially mine. Dad, happy dad. I have Father's Day. Pops, we spoke earlier this morning. Me, you, my brother Eric on our our three way. Uh, we do some, we do some often uh, every year definitely, but a little uh, FaceTime uh, session this morning. We should we, we should make that every. If you guys listen to this podcast, we should listen. We should do that every Sunday if we could, or at least every couple Sundays. Man, it's really cool. I mean, he lives. So my dad and I live. Unfortunately, I was able to make a big brunch day with them today because um, they, they live a little further. Out of the area that they live down close in Miami. I'm up in, in Palm Beach County, so about an hour away. Um, so it's not as convenient to just drop and go. My brother and my 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 dad are live are literally <laughs> two minutes from each other, so it's it's convenient. But uh, which I was there for you guys and having a good time and having some fellowship with you guys. But uh, have follows it nonetheless to you, my brother, my all my brothers as well to my family, my cousins, and all my friends and family um throughout the country and whatnot. Um, I want to make this a relatively shorter pod than, than usual. On a solo end because uh, I am supposed to be grilling with uh, my neighbors today um, to celebrate Father's Day. I, I, I know a uh, uh, happy Father's Day to my neighbors as well, too, Chris and, and Trey. Um, and uh, I've had a pretty decent Father's Day for the most part. I, you know, I don't, I don't really need much. I don't really ask for much. I think my my wife had asked me the other day, "Which one Father's Day?" I told him, "I don't want anything. I just want peace and quiet. I just want to be relaxed and just take a Sunday to just relax." lay back, watch my shows, you know, whatever it may be. Just kind of having a relaxing day with my family and having a good time. I don't, I don't, I don't ask for much. And I've gotten that support today. My my kids have been real to me. <laughs> Surprise, not, not knock, because it's still, it was still half, it was half the day in. I'm still going to have a couple hours ago for the rest of the day. Um, but they've been real to be quiet and, and they've been keeping, you know, keep me stress-free today, you know, because my kids are reactive. They like to go out a lot. They like to they want, want dad, they want me to be involved in everything that goes on, which I'm, I'm grateful for, obviously. And you, as a father, you want to be in involved in your kids' lives as much as possible. Um, with my kids, though, they are very hyper and they like to go outside a lot and, you know, they need some vision. And it, I, got, I, I, I explained to guys in the last recent podcast that every time we go out, I love doing it. But then, but then when I go to sleep and I'm trying to wind down for the day, I am beat. I'm exhausted, but today they've been good. They've been in the house most of the time, most of the day, playing video games and watching TV. And I went outside for like an hour or so earlier, and then, then came back in, and that was it. So it's been it's been a good day though. It's been really relaxing day so far. Hopefully, you can start grilling, have some food today with my neighbors. Um, as soon as I got this podcast, um, but a couple things got my chest. I want to I want to touch on um before you know to, before we end this. Um, obviously NBA Finals did not end as I predicted. Uh, we will have a game five. Um, on uh. On tomorrow night, Monday night, uh, Celtics and, and Mavericks. Um, just as I predicted, um, Dallas will bounce back. Look, I people thought they're gonna get swept, and I said, nah, because I think the only I, I think the thing is, the only thing worse than losing a NBA Finals is getting swept in the finals. And I, I think if anything, I think if anything, um, they don't want to have that on on their uh, on their you know. The resume, if you want to call it. like you know, he lost in the NBA Finals, but whatever. But to get swept in the NBA Finals too on top of that, yeah, I don't think the Mavericks won that. And I'll say this much about the series too, especially. Um, I, I as I said, I, I think I, I thought Dallas will win Game Four and then they'll lose Game Five in Boston. That's what I'll say. Dallas did the easy part yesterday, on Friday rather, by winning that game, um, on uh on Friday. The easy part was avoiding the, the embarrassment of getting swept in the finals. The hard part starts now on Monday. Can they steal a game in Boston? 
if, and I don't think it's gonna happen, it's not a prediction because I have I predicted Boston to win to win this in five. However, if for some reason Dallas steals game five on the road, all of a sudden now we have a situation where Dallas gets back home for game six with, with all momentum back to them, themselves. Okay. Dallas now a little bit doubt creeping in probably a little bit mentally. Don't forget now, Christopher Zingas missed the miss last two games. You could argue a large part of the reason why they are, I, I believe, the a large part of the reason why this was a 3 0 hole. Well, at least 2 0 before he missed game three, but 3 0 hole was because of Zingas' uh, impact on the series early on. And he's still hurt. Now, he may play game five, may not play game five. Do you, do you rush him back for one of these games to make sure you close cl- out the series? Who knows? But I do think there's a risk here. Um, that if, if if Boston does not win and close it out tomorrow night in Game Five, there's a decent chance. I'm not saying it's gonna it's a, it's a heavy favorite, but there's a decent chance that Dallas could also win Game Six, and we see a Game Seven next week. So I'm not s- sitting there predicting that we're gonna get a uh, a, a Game Six because I don't think we will. Because the, the, but the Dallas did, did the easy part. On Friday, winning, avoiding elimination, avoiding uh, uh, getting swept. The hard part now begins on Monday. Can they somehow steal a game on the road? Um, and uh, if so, whew, a, I, I think there's a decent chance we see a game seven. I still think also too, we will in my lifetime see a team come back from 3 three from the three zero deficit to win a series. Okay, we almost got last year in the East Conference Finals with the, with the uh, Mavericks and the uh, Celtics. No, sorry. That's wrong. The Heat in the Celtics, where the Heat had a three nothing lead, lost last three games, and then one game seven, thankfully, at Boston. I think we will see th- that happen in my lifetime. When will happen? I don't know. <laughs> um, I would, I, I hope it happens in this series, but I doubt it. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I, I think there's a decent chance it will happen at some point in my lifetime. I think, we'll have, I think it'll happen in the next couple of years. To be honest with you, I, I think the parody in the league now is is made it to where. Teams are always never really out of it, and you really you're going game to game, one game at a time. If you think about it. it, it seems easy, but it really isn't, I guess, because it hasn't been done in was 158 tries. You've seen 3 0 in the playoffs, and not and not one time is team come back to win a series again. We came close last year, but uh, we'll see. As for the Stanley Cup finals, too, in, in hockey, um, same situation, um, 3 0 Panthers. Now they lose game four at Edmonton. That one's a little more shocking. I thought Florida would win that series in a sweep. And my logistics on that was more so the travel schedule. It's game five is in Florida. Um, I think, and if you know Florida and Edmonton were located, um, they are 2,500 miles apart. I felt like if, game, if Florida won game three, there's no way how Edmonton's going to want to travel back to Florida just to lose game five. And if they win game five, fly back, fly back to Edmonton for game six another 2,500 miles. If they win game six, go back for 2,500 miles to game seven. So that that's immense, and people don't consider the the travel aspect. That's tough. But Edmonton came out and guns are blazing and won one game four eight to one last night. Wow, I'm stunned. I'm stunned. Look, I think Florida will close it out in game five. They got a better team. I think Florida had a little bit of a brain fart last night, but that game was never really good. that game was done pretty much from the opening bell. Um, it was two, before you blink. It was two nothing. Uh, Edmonton out the shoot, and before you know it, Florida had a goal. It cut two to one, and that was it. The game was over. Eight to one, but I think Florida closes out um, on Tuesday for Game Five. Um, they, they're just a better team. Edmonton has had a, you know, I think they had their Dallas Mavericks moment last night that they didn't want to get embarrassed. Which you know, kudos to them. It's good, but uh, I think it's over on Tuesday. But we'll see. We'll see how the series goes. Well, obviously, things change in the, in the next week. We'll obviously you know podcast to talk about it, and we'll uh, do do that on there. I will say though about talking about things though. One thing I'm really getting tired of talking about now, honestly, and it's not so much her but the narratives around her is the caitlin clark stuff we're hearing on social media you know and look i get the conversation there there are there are still some really good productive conversations out there about caitlin clark and those are the ones i turn to gain in but it's very far in view very far in view a lot of a lot of the caitlin clark narratives now is, is there's a lot of race baiting on both sides political baiting on both sides you know this and that i'm just tired of talking about it I want to talk about her in basketball. Look, I, I do think it's great that ultimately, for the greater good, the, the conversations here about Caitlin Clark is going to result in WNBA getting some very easy eyeballs. It's good for the league. It's good for the sport. 
and the, and the ladies should embrace that. I know there's a lot of ladies. Look, you can't, you you can't. Um, there's a lot of jealousy there, and that's fine. It, it, being jealous is actually a normal reaction, normal, tr- uh, normal reaction to things. I get that envy. I get that those, those things are normal. They're not great things to have, but they're, it's, it's, it's a normal reaction. But you can't deny that 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 is a thing here when it comes to player the players in the WNBA who's been there and holding this whole league down for as long as it's been. And then here comes Caitlin Clark coming in here with her with her um Kyle's, Kyle's career was phenomenal and then coming with her all her endorsements and stuff and making money out, out the wazoo uh, with, with endorsements and coming in here with all the eyeballs. I get it. I, I totally get it. I I'd be a little little miff too. But the reality is that Caitlin Clark is going to be that spark. That gets the eyeballs probably on, on this on this league. Okay, look at it like like Tiger Woods for example. Tiger Woods expect Tiger Woods like golf has always been relatively a a popular sport to some degree. People people watch golf, but when Tiger Woods got involved in 1996 and won the Masters in 1996, the whole thing changed. It went from being a sport that you know people watch but not it's not not top of mind to now Tiger Woods now made golf in a lot of ways way more interesting than it probably had any business to be. You know, when you have, and I think also what people aren't crediting this also, forget the racial stuff here, forget all that, all the narrative here, political, all that. When you have an anomaly, you know, we, look, we've seen this in, in basketball before. The NBA is a mostly a black sport, black dominated sport. Okay, the NBA, okay? But when Larry Bird came in the league in, the, in 1979, and then Larry Bird not only was, came in the league, Larry Bird dominated as a white guy in the league in 79, okay? And at some at a good chunk of the mid-80s was the clear-cut best player in basketball. Larry Bird was the best player in the world for a good three, four, five-year period in the NBA. That's not, that's not even debatable, to be honest with you. Anybody will tell you that Larry Bird between 1982, 83 to 85, 86 was the best player in basketball, okay? High to powers, Larry Bird is one of the greatest high to powers we've seen in league history. So we see. So when you have an anomaly coming in here in a league dominated by another race, for example, it's going to get a lot of eyeballs and a lot of interest, regardless. Okay, that's just what, what it is. The same thing. With, same thing with golf in in a in a sport dominated by white and even more so dominated by white by by white people. Okay, here's a black golfer who out of nowhere. Dominate the sport. It's still arguably the greatest golfer. Not 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 today, obviously, because he's you know older and obviously injuries and all that. But as regarded as probably the greatest golfer in the history of golf, okay, and still has eyeballs to this day. Twenty something five, twenty five years later, almost thirty years later, still has a lot of interest in that sport because of him, his name, and a lot of blacks who probably didn't watch golf for a long time, will never watch golf at all, got interested in golf because of Tiger Woods. Now, obviously, Kevin Clark. We're gonna see how Kevin Clark's career plays out in the years to come, because obviously, Kevin Clark has only has only been playing in WNBA for what a month. So obviously, there's a lot more to play. But just the but the impact of the entry so far, at least, is is no different. I'm so sick and tired of talking about talking about this thing. I'm 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 tired of hearing the political things and in in the, in the, in the, the racial things and oh, she's white. So that's the reason they care. Okay, fine. It is what it is. But the reality is. Those eyeballs, you want those eyeballs, you want those numbers, you want that money. So you, you can take charter flights now. So you can you can, you know, have more endorsements and more and better TV deals and better contracts. And if Caitlin Clark is the reason you get there, then so be it. So be it. And and, and that's just it. You know, we need to bring these conversations down more down to a simpler common sense point of view. Clayton Clark is drawing more eyeballs than anybody in that sport. And and, and that's a fact. That's a fact. Okay? And I, I wish these ladies would embrace that more. So that's my opinion. But, I'm, but overall, I'm just sick and done talking about it. People talk about, like, well, Caitlin Clark's obligated to talk about these, these issues. And no, she's not. I would like for her to talk about these issues. But I don't want someone to talk about issues she has no business talking about or not passionate about either. I got a conversation about this on, on, on social media yesterday. A lot of people in the media are saying that um, Kay Clark should talk about the misogyny in, in WNBA and all this stuff and the racism and all that. And while I agree that I would like for her to do so, I would like for her to do so also 
if she feels the same way about it. Be authentic to who she is. Not do things such because someone else thinks she should do it because it makes me feel good that she's doing that. Because here's a, here's a sad part too also. Say Clayton Clark does those things also too. Even whether or not she's passionate about or not about, about those issues, those social issues. Who knows? Then you have people saying, oh, well, that wasn't genuine. That wasn't genuine enough. So again, she can't win here either way. So all I say is Ken Clark, put your head down, play basketball, and call and, and just, you know what? Do do a bit what's best for Kate and Clark. Okay? That's all I'll say about that. Anyway, you know, it's not gonna be a popular take, but I don't give a damn. All right. Um, baseball talk, actually, yes. So I've haven't been watching baseball the last month, because I had told you guys earlier, you know, um back in was it May, whatever, the Mets the stink. And I told you guys I'm out on the Mets. Stop paying attention really to the Mets a lot in the last like couple weeks. Then also I, I I checked the standings recently, and they're playing good baseball all of a sudden now. They've won seven last ten games. Right now, I think they're leading their game as the Padres are now currently. Um and I was like, oh well, I would have won some games, but you know what? They're gonna they're gonna fall apart anyway. So I, I decided to random ch- check the uh the standings, I think Thursday for the first time in in quite a while. And all of a sudden the Mets Look, they have no shot winning the NL East because the Phillies are, like, what, 14 games ahead of them. The Phillies are the best team in the final National League. Arguing baseball. But the Mets are just two games back of the wild card. Now, granted, the wild card race is a mess between, like, eight, nine teams. But, again, if the Mets can stay the course and do their job and win games, because, and I'll say it again, they have the talent to do this because, they this team this a lot of these places these pieces were, were at just in the in the playoffs two years ago, so not like they can't do this. But the Mets are only two games back on the wild card, folks. And I don't know. All of a sudden, I'm getting a little optimistic. Um, cautious optimism, obviously. Um, but I'm I'm watching again a little bit because because I want to see. Look, as long as the Mets are competitive, are are in battling for playoff spots during the summer, I'm going to watch. I'm gonna keep my eyeballs. Okay. If they're not, then I'll see you next year. That's been, that's been my answer for, for quite a while now. But they're only two back on the wild card right now. And baseball's a long season ahead of us. Maybe they stay competitive enough to where they make might make another move to stay in the race and maybe they make a, a, a massive move. Who knows? I don't know what's out there, but the Mets are keep me a little uh optimistic, a little bit. I say a little bit because I still as a Mets fan, you know how this works sometimes. Don't trust that team because you know that they'll let you down anyway. So, but that's all I got to say about that. Uh, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, uh, rumored vice presidential shortlist supposedly came out last week. Um, the list is not too surprising, really. Think about it. Um, I don't the list I see here though, really, I don't see any females here. I actually thought she he would pick a a female as a, as a running mate, but the list I've I've seen here so far as of late, the rumored, um. Um, VP list. Um, you have Marco Rubio, uh, Florida Senator. You have the, the, uh, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum, um, South Carolina um, Senator Tim Scott, and Ohio S- uh, Senator uh, JD Vance. I don't, on the four guys so far on the list. Um, I know there was a, a talk about what's the, 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 the chick's name in uh, Dakota, whatever her name is. Um, uh, uh, I forgot her name. It doesn't matter. But I thought it'd be at least more female. I thought maybe, maybe Carrie Lake, but Carrie Lake obviously is. Uh, that's smart not him to involved in that. Why would you have a Trump acolyte like 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 him? No, that's not smart. Um a lot of people still want Ben Carson to be the running mate, which I see I see the appeal there. Black number one, I get that. But also very mild tempered in comparison to Donald Trump. Kind of like Mike Pence in a sense, but this black. Um my my prediction is of these four guys, I feel like JD Vance might be the only might, might be the one actually that might I, I think the dark horse here. Um, Tim Scott, eh, I don't know. Still like a kiss ass. I played that. I remember I played the um, the audio of uh, of Tim Scott introducing endorsing Donald Trump on this podcast back in February. How long it was, and complete kiss ass um, situation there. Uh, Marco Rubio, I don't see it happening. Little Marco, I don't see that happening. I think J.D. Vance is, is the dark horse here. Um, but uh, you know what I, what I am I, what I will say about this is uh, thank God. You know, Tulsi Gabbard, the grifter, who, I, who I'm totally off the wagon of now. That that woman's a complete grifter. Um, is, is gone completely from one side to the next. Now, all of a sudden, now he's she's considering being Donald Trump's uh, VP. 
and there's been some, some talk about her maybe being trying to get into those circles to become a VP. She says she would do it if she's asked. Whatever. Do, I mean, again, she does what she wants, but to me, she's just she's so unauthentic, man. To to, to I mean, I, I don't know what she stands anymore, anything. Because look, I I know she has a lot of like resentment for Democrats, and I totally get it. She got screwed by the party, and she has a right to be pissed at the party itself for how they treated her when she was running as Democrat um, back in 2020 and, and, and whatnot. But, again, where is she on the issues now? The issues that I cared about, that reason I even liked her in the first place because of the policy issues I liked about her. She doesn't even talk about those things anymore. She doesn't talk about universal, universal health care. She doesn't talk about uh, um, UBI. She doesn't talk about all these things. Okay, Everything now is about, oh, the, the cabal and Joe Biden's administration and blah, 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 blah. Like I said, to me, she's a grifter. And, but again, that's where the money's at right now. So there's that. Um, so, so a couple of things before I get out of here. Uh, re- reviews on some shows and stuff I've been watching. I'm caught up on the boys, obviously, now that they, they just dropped season four. Um, the first three episodes of season four this week. Uh, I watched all three episodes. Got to tell you, the boys love the show. But the main plot of the show, I'm lost. I'm really lost. I'm, I'm hoping to do a podcast with someone. Maybe with my wife, maybe. Or maybe someone else I, I watched the show with me. Um discuss it because i'm this, this show's a little a little lost now it feels like it's a little in the woods a little bit now in terms of the main story plot there's a lot of good there's a lot of good subplots in the show but the boys is kind of lost in terms of uh where it's going right now at least in my opinion um i did however last night my wife and i we did start watching corporate kai on netflix after six years i finally got to start watching it um which is cool because the the final season starts a uh, drops actually um next month actually um Cobra Kai, of course, is the 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 continuation of the Karate Kid movies from the '80s. Of course, you guys know the Karate Kid and Rap, Rap Machio and Mr. Miyagi and all that. Um, I've heard a great thing about the show. I've been saying for years that it's a, it's a great watch, easy watch. My wife and I we we, we literally watched for six, six episodes of uh, season one last night, real quickly. Um, episodes of uh, like no more than thirty minutes long. Um, I think 30, I think episode ten is actually maybe thirty five minutes long, but that's it. But they well under an under well under an hour, half an hour, a little, little more under half an hour, or a little less at times. Um, very easy watch. Love the storytelling so far of the show. Obviously, I review the show as I get through it and get caught up in all that. But I started that last night, Final Cobra Kai, and I think there's six years in, six seasons into the show. Um, but it's only ten episodes per season, and I, again, episode each episode is what thirty minutes ish. I'll give I'll give a take on average. I should finish that show literally probably next week or two, honestly. Um, and then the last thing I, I'm going to review here is I reviewed, I I also watched the, on Peacock, um, the Kurt Angle uh, documentary called Angle. Uh, Kurt Angle, of course, you know, if you're a wrestling fan, he's a obviously one of the, the truly one of the great superstars in the history of uh, WWE. But what I love about this documentary is that it didn't really focus, a, a lot of the, of the documentary was like almost two hours long. The majority of the documentary focused on his on on his life, and really, the majority of the documentary focused on I would say got about an hour and twenty minutes of this documentary focused mostly on his ascent as an Olympic gold medalist. He won the gold in rest in amateur wrestling in 1996, and it focused on his childhood all the way through his his uh, his journey into into amateur wrestling. Now, obviously, they will be they was focused definitely on his WWE career and all that, which obviously speaks for itself. But I love that because i learned a lot about him the person his background his family background they also got heavily into his which i love too because when he his his actual really peak of his wwe career is when i really stopped watching wwe for those 17 years like i stopped watching 2002 and he was still top top notch wrestler in 02 03 or 405 went to tna for a couple of years but um um they focus a lot on his Drug addictions, his pain clothes addictions. Remember, he broke his neck in amateur wrestling back in 1996. And a few times after that, even in WWE, he re injured his neck. I think he broke his neck, I think, three times in the span of like one year between 2003 and 2004. Um, and it started, it triggered the a addiction to painkillers, which he took a long time to get over. And it went really very, very um, transparent about his addictions and whatnot, him and his wife and his his kids and how that affected his whole life for a long time. And they went into that. They really dove into that in a very honest fashion. So it's a really good watch. If you, if you love Kurt Angle, if you love wrestling, of course, but it's, it's actually, not, not this a wrestling documentary. It's actually a really, it's a human, um, human life. Uh, hu- I don't know what term to use for that, but 
it, you know, focus on the Kurt Angle's life as a whole. Very, very human um, documentary there on Kurt Angle called Angle. Phenomenal documentary. I really enjoyed that one that I watched last week. Um, and you know what? That's for me. I'll call it that there because uh, it is Father's Day. I think about my kids and get to eat some food with my, with, with my, uh, my neighbors. So, again, I am on Twitter slash X at EJ Christian 7 or take a podcast across all podcast catchers. Um, uh, it's, I know it's been a while since I recorded one, but almost a month. But if you do, if you do love wrestling, and love, especially love retro wrestling. Check out my wrestling, retro, my wrestling retrospective podcast on any podcast catcher. Um, other than that, we will talk soon. Um, enjoy the rest of your weekend, fellas. Again, happy Father's Day. Um, enjoy your family time, and we will talk soon. Love y'all. God bless and. Stay- <laughs>